Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning a traditional bluegrass tune, Whiskey Before Breakfast, which I would not recommend, but on a serious note, this song is a lot of fun to play. As you heard and saw, it's a duet, so we have a rhythm section and a lead section. Now, I think this piece is going to be best suited for the seasoned intermediate player because it's going to present a few concepts that are quite challenging but are going to help develop your playing. So let's break it down and talk about it real quick. So for the rhythm section, you have a lot of movement in the chords that you're playing and they occur throughout the span of the neck. So let me play a little bit. So we have a lot of movement happening and did you catch the other thing? There was a walk, walking down bass line of just the C major scale. So really cool to throw that in there. It really helps the melodic aspect of it flow better. So we're gonna be breaking that down, looking at that, looking at ways to make these quick chord changes happen seamlessly. Now, as far as the lead player, you're gonna be working on left hand dexterity and efficiency in the right hand. So let's talk about this right hand real quick. We have a picking approach that is known in the classical world as piccato, where we're alternating between middle index, middle index, middle index. So two finger alternating. And it looks a little bit like this. So it makes picking really efficient. And we actually had a lesson that came out probably a few weeks ago that was all about this. So if you wanna really dive into that picking technique, check out this lesson. It's a flamenco tune, really cool. Uh, as far as the left hand, we're gonna be playing in what's known as a position or a box. Basically each finger gets its own fret. So no matter what you play here, each finger would get its own fret. So index would be first fret, middle would be second fret, ring, pinky, so forth. So instead of doing something, I see a lot of beginners will do these awkward stretches that makes playing much more difficult and slows you down. So we're gonna be looking at playing in a box or as others refer, playing in a position. So those are the things that we're gonna be working on throughout this lesson. So let's go ahead and talk about this lesson. So this lesson is part one. And in part one, we're gonna be learning the first half of the tune. So we're gonna learn the first melody, both sections. We're gonna learn the lead and the rhythm. If you guys wanna learn the second half, we're gonna be covering that in the part two lesson at rockclass101.com. So you can click this link right here to check out the entire lesson, or you can go to the site and do a search for whiskey before breakfast. Now on that page, you're also going to be able to find the tabs that you can print off and follow along with as a PDF format, as well as access the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed. Just a really great asset in learning this song that much easier. And last but not least, I'm going to include a backing track of the rhythm section. So once you learn the lead, you can jam along at home and rock out. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. So before we start learning it, I do want to talk a little bit about the mechanics behind this lesson and some of the things that you should know. First off, we're going to be calling out the rhythms as we work our way throughout this tune. So make sure you understand rhythmic notation. So that's understanding how eighth notes and quarter notes fit into, a, into timing. So check out this lesson if you're brand new to counting rhythms while you play. And we also need to point out that this whole song has a swung eighth note feel. So if you're new to understanding the difference between straight eighth notes and swung eighth notes, I'm gonna put a link to an extra lesson that covers and explains that in complete detail in the comment box below. Now, as far as our right hand picking technique, we already mentioned that we're using piccato. So again, that's just an alternate finger picking using the middle finger and the index. So if you're new to this, you can just practice on the A string, just go two, one, two, one. So we always lead with the middle finger, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. But the goal of this is to try and make everything alternating. So if you had a picking pattern that went string one, one, two, you can see that the first time when I get to string two, it's the middle finger. But then when I go back down to string one to repeat that pattern, 
I start with the index one, one, and then now I'm with the index finger on the second. So each time you get to the second string, it's a different finger, right? So if I call out fingers, it's two, one, two, one, two, one. Again, two, one, two, one, two, one. So that's a really challenging uh, pattern that you can practice to get this piccato down. So again, you're playing string one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. But you want to keep it alternating with these two fingers. Now, I like to do a bit of cheating because, uh, you know, I'm not a classical player and I don't really hold myself to, you know, doing it exactly with piccato throughout. So I like to use my thumb to play string four and three, and I use piccato for string two and one. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, feel free to experiment and do whatever is easiest and most comfortable for you, but it is a quick tempo for this song, so I would really, really encourage you to give this a shot. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the first part. We're gonna kick off with the melody. If you wanna learn just the rhythm, it'll start at this section. So one thing I forgot to mention as I'm editing is that this song actually has a four bar intro. So you're not gonna be coming in until the fifth bar. So the rhythm player is gonna be playing one, two, and three, four, two, two, and three, four, three, two, and three, four, four, two, and three, four, five. And that's where you come in on the fifth bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and play bar one, and this is what it sounds like. And this whole first melody only has eight bars. And again, the second melody would have eight bars. So it's only 16 bars in this tune. So let me go ahead and play the first bar and we'll break it down and learn it. Sounds like this. Okay, and if I call it that rhythm, I have one and two and three. So we have just a very simple rhythm. We have one and two and three. So we have swung eighth notes. Keep that in mind too. So we're literally just walking our way up the C major scale. So we're gonna play open C, then the second fret of string three to the open E after that, the first fret of the E string and the third fret. So you have O, two, O, one, three, okay? And remember how we talked about in the intro, we're playing out of a position or a box. So each finger gets its own fret. So remember I pointed out where the first position of the neck is frets one through four. So you notice that each finger gets its own fret. So it makes playing really efficient. So don't do anything that's like where you double a finger, right? We wanna make this really efficient so that when we do boost the tempo up, we can play it at that quicker tempo. So again, we have O, two on the C string, then on the E string, O, one, three. So let's see if we can try it together. So that last note is a half note. So we have one and two and three, four. So let's see if we can do that together. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Awesome. Now bar two sounds like this. It's gonna be all eighth notes and the last note is a quarter note. Okay, so let's break this one down. We have one and two and three and four. Okay, so you start on the third fret of the second string. We're gonna play that note. We can keep our ring finger anchored. Follow that up by playing the open A, and then back to the third fret of string two, and then the first fret of string two. So there's the first half. So you have three, oh, three, one. Okay, so again, three, oh, three, one. After that, you're gonna lift up, play the open E, then the second fret of string three, and then the open C. Okay, so the second half you have E to D to C. Okay, so that's three and four. That's our rhythm. So if we put that together, guys, we have three, oh, three, one, oh, two, oh. So let's see if we can try that one together. Three and four and one and two and three and four. Nice. Now if we backtrack, let's see if we can do one to two. Here we go, three and four and one and two and three, four. 
One and two and three and four. Nice. So let's look at our third bar now. This rhythm gets a little trickier. We have one, two, and three, four, and... So we have quarter, eighth, quarter, eighth. So it sounds like this on the uke. So if I call it out, I have one, two, and three, four, and... So let's break it down. We're starting on the first fret of string two with the index, so we're gonna play that, that's a quarter. Then on beat two, we're gonna play the open A to the first fret again of string two. So you have one, two, and... So we call out the hits, we have one, oh, one. Okay, then the second half, same rhythm, but this time we're gonna lift up, play the open E, and then follow it up by playing the open G to the open E again. So you have oh, oh, oh. Okay, so that's the second half. If you put that together, guys, you have one, oh, one, oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's see if we can try that together. Three and four and one, two and three, four and. Okay, so all these opens at the end of that bar will buy us time to move our hand up so that we can play this last bar, this fourth bar, which sounds like that. And this fourth bar, you can see we're still in a position, but this time we're higher up on the neck, and our position is frets five to eight. So keep in mind, each finger gets its own fret. So for this one, we're gonna start on the fifth fret of string one. So we're gonna play five, seven, five. Okay, so five, seven, five. And then with the pinky, go to the eighth fret of string two. Okay, so that's the first half. You have five, seven, five, eight. Okay, let's try just that together. Three and four and one and two and... After that, lift the pinky up, put this ring finger on the seventh fret of string two, play that note, and then the open A, and the open G after. That open G is a quarter note. So if I count out this rhythm, I have one and two and three and four. So take note of my index finger. You see how it stays anchored? Because I want that note to sustain throughout this phrase. And I only lift it when I need to. So at the very end of this lick. So it will lift up on the end of three. One and two and three and four. Okay, so you lift it up only when you need to lift it up. So again, we have five, seven, five, eight, seven, oh, oh. Let's see if we can try that one together. Three and four and one and two and three and four. Nice, now let's backtrack, let's try one, I'm sorry, bar three and four together, and then we'll go one to four. Here we go, three and four. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Nice, now one through four, here we go. Three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Very good. Now let's take a look at the fifth and the sixth bar, because there's something that happens. The fifth and the sixth bar are identical to one and two, so we already know it. That's bar five, bar six. So you're literally just playing the exact same two bars, and then for bar seven and eight, we have a really cool walk down that's all on the first string. So the seventh bar is all eighth notes, and it sounds like this. Okay, so let's break that one down. So we're gonna start with a extended box. So it breaks out of the eight to 11 because we've got to stretch to the 12th fret. So here are the fingers that I would recommend to use. So you're gonna start with the index finger on the eighth fret. Then use your pinky to play the 12th fret. After that, use the ring to play the 10th fret, and then the index again for the 8th fret. So you have 8, 12, 10, 8. Remember, this piccato is great for this section. 
8, 12, 10, 8. After that, you're going to shift this finger down one fret. So now it's on the seventh fret, and this will be your new box. And here we're back to frets 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're back to the standard box sh uh, shape. So from here, we're going to go 7, 10, 8, 7. Okay, so 7, 10, 8, 7. So 7, 10, 8, 7. Okay. So if we put that together, guys, let's try the first half together. Three and four and eight, 12, 10, eight. Now let's try the second half. Remember, move that index down one half step and you have seven, 10, eight, seven. Here we go. Three and four and seven, 10, eight, seven. Now if we put the entire bar together, three and four and one and two and three and four and... Awesome. So after this, we have a big jump. We're going down to this box of two to five. So when we finish playing, we have to move this index finger from the seventh fret, that's where it left off, to the second fret. But our first note is going to be on the fifth fret. So here's the last bar. And that rhythm is one and two and three, four. So the last note is a half note. So you're gonna start on the fifth fret. So you've got five, then to three, then to two, back to five, and finish up on three. Five, three, two, five, three. So the tricky thing that you wanna practice is that last half of bar seven going to bar eight. So you have just a quick jump. So I would lead with the index finger down there. And remember, a good rule of thumb is not to watch your index finger slide down, but to keep it on the target. So if my target is the second fret, then I want to keep my eye on the second fret and move my hand until it meets my eye. That's going to be the easiest way to do this. Okay. Not my cleanest playing, but... <laughs> Sounds like that. So let's uh, try the eighth bar together. Again, it's five, three, two, five, three. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three, four. Okay. Now if we try both of those bars together, so we'll do seven and eight together. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. Nice. And if any of this is going too fast, guys, I'll put a little image here. You can use that cog on the YouTube player to slow this down to like 75, 50% speed, and that'll be uh, maybe a better pace for where you're at. Now let's go backtrack and let's do the second half. So we're gonna do bars five, six, seven, and eight. Remember five and six are the same as one and two. Here we go, three and four, and one and two and three, four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three, four. Very good. Uh, another really quick tip to point out, when you finish bar six, ends on that open C, you can use that same uh, eyesight. So you keep your eye on the target eighth fret uh, right here, this F note. Keep your eye on the target and move your hand up until it meets the target. So you don't want to watch your hand slide up. So if I play six to seven, my eye stays on that eighth fret and my hand moves up till it meets my eye. That's going to be the easiest way to jump up there and nail that fret each time. So let's see if we can backtrack. Let's try one through eight. So the entire A melody. Here we go. Three and four and one and two and three, four. One and two and three and four. One, two and three, four. And one and two and three and four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three, four. And another quick tip too, when you finish that six bar, that C string will be ringing out, but you can use the palm of your right hand to touch the string to mute it. So if you're new to using the palm of your hand to control 
muting, then we actually had a lesson about a couple of months ago that was all about the right hand, and it covered muting, and it also covered just getting precision in your right hand attack. So really, really valuable and useful information in this lesson. So if you wanna dive more into the right hand, check out that lesson. All right, so that's the entire melody for the A melody. Now let's go ahead and learn what the rhythm section is playing. Hey guys, so as I'm sitting here editing, I realized that I forgot to mention that the song has a four bar intro. And that intro consists of you vamping on the C major chord. This is the first and second bar of the A melody. So what you're about to learn is this. So you're about to learn that part. So if you want to play the intro, just like you saw in the performance, you're just going to play that same C bar, that first bar of this A melody, four times. One, two, and three, four, two, two, and three, four, three, two, and three, four, four, two, and three, four, five. And that's where you come in on the fifth bar. Now the rhythm section is literally just a mix between quarter notes and swung eighth notes. And that's it. So we're, we have pretty much a set pattern that we're following. Sometimes it varies a little bit. So let's go ahead and break it down and learn it. The chords aren't too hard, a couple tricky shapes, but nothing super duper hard for this A melody. So let me go ahead and play the first two bars and then we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so it sounds like that. So first off, we're out of a basic C. This time around, we're using the index finger to form the C chord. So we're going to be using our thumb to play strings three and four. And then for strumming, we can just use the nails of our hands and it gives us a bit of a brighter tone. So I really like using the nail to strum down with. So for this, we're going to start by playing the open C and then we're gonna do two strums. We have down, up. So you can come up with the nail of your thumb. So one, two, and. And remember, we want to keep that rhythm swung. So these eighth notes keep that rhythm with that swung feel. One, two, and. So we've got thumb, down, up. After that, you're going to play the open G. So that's beat three. And then we're going to do one strum down for beat four. So you have one, two, and three, four. OK, so you have three strum, strum, four, strum. OK. So let's see if we can try that together. Three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay, now we can actually double this for the next bar. So we're just gonna play the exact same thing. One, two, and three, four. Okay, so together you have one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay, so that gives you the first two bars. Let's try together. Three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. From here, it starts to get a little trickier. So keep that index finger on that first string, third fret. We're gonna form an F chord, so use the ring finger for the fifth fret of string three, pinky underneath it, fifth fret of string two. We're ignoring string four, so we're playing three down. So we're gonna play string three by itself, then strum. And then we're gonna to switch to a different voicing of C. So lift the ring finger up, put the middle finger on the fourth fret of string three, lift the pinky up, and we're going to do a partial bar with the index finger. So it's gonna cover the third fret strings one and two. So you have four, three, three. And we're gonna do the same hits. So we're gonna play string three and then strum down. Now, proper left hand form is super vital for these trickier chords, these partial bar chords. So if you're new, to understanding or working on uh, these, these kind of chords and this form, then check out this lesson because a guy dives super in depth into proper form and mastering partial bar chords, full bar chords, and, and regular chords. So again, we have F to C. So we have three strum, three strum. So you wanna just practice that transition. So going from the F to C. So a great way to practice is to put it in a time frame like one, two, three, four, like half notes. You can just practice the muscle memory. Remember when you move from chord to chord, you move in unison. So you don't go 
ba ba ba, you go together. Three fingers, two fingers, all move at the same time. That's the tricky thing. Okay, so again, we have three strum, three strum. Every strum's just a down hit, right? So let's see if we can try that together. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So rhythm, quarter notes, right? Very simple rhythm. After that, we're going to a G chord. This G, we're not gonna form it like we typically do. We're gonna do a partial bar, so lay that index flat on that second fret, strings one, two, and three, add the middle finger, and here we go. So for this one, we can play the open fourth string, of course. So our rhythm goes back to what we did in the first two bars, where we had one, two, and three, four. So you play string three, down, up, string four, down. Okay, so you have one, two, and three, four. All right, so let's try that bar together. Three, four. One, two, and three, four. Nice. Now let's backtrack. Let's try bar three and four together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. Nice, now let's go one through four together. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. So you can hear on bar three, I'm putting a little bit of a staccato hit. So with staccato, you're just kind of lifting up those fingers and it becomes a mute. You keep touching the strings, but it mutes it. And it just gives it a little bit of a character, you know, it switches things up. So these subtle things that you put into your playing, that's what really makes like the players that you admire stand out because they do little subtle things in their playing. See, subtle things make a big impact on how it sounds overall. All right, let's take a look at bar five and six. Bar five and six, again, as we did in the melody uh, for bar one and two, they just repeat. So you're back to playing the same C, same rhythm. And then guess what for this time? Bar seven and eight are identical until the last half of bar eight. The last half of bar eight will switch from the G chord back to a C. So if we look at bar eight, we have one, two, and three, four. So you're starting on the G, so three, down, up, and then this time around, you're gonna play the open C, and then strum the regular C. So bar eight, one, two, and three, four. Okay, so let's try that together. Three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay, so let's see if we can go five, six, seven, and eight together, then we'll do one through eight. Here we go, three, four, one, two and three four one two and three four one two three four one two and three four nice now let's go one through eight here we go one two ready go one two and three four one two and three four one two three four one two and three four one That's everything for the A melody, guys. So that's gonna repeat twice. So the melody and the chords, they go two times in a row. So the form of this song is A, A, B, B, and then it just repeats. So what's cool with this is that one of you can play the lead, so you can go A, A, B, B, and then you can switch off. You can, the next time around playing the tune, you can play the rhythm and go A, A, B, B. And then feel free to uh, carry on with the rhythm and one person can play a little solo over it too. So you can take turns soloing too, which would be a lot of fun. Anyways, that's everything for this lesson. So in the part two lesson, we're gonna pick up and learn the 
B melody, so the second half of this tune. So guys, if you want to learn the second half, watch the part two lesson, download the tabs, and access that really cool on-screen tab viewer, you can click this link to check out the complete lesson, or you can go to the site, do a search for whiskey before breakfast. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I will see you in the part two. Thanks.